Welcome, Hordlings, to another Game Horror production. An advanced Dungeons and Dragons Forgotten Realm role-playing epic. Treasures of the Savage Frontier. Oh, uh, that's right, son. We're getting to it. After your victory over the Zentarum, you are honored as the heroes of Ascor. In the hills above Yartar, you seek a moment of quiet solitude, one beautiful autumn day. But your enemies still survive. An old friend summons you to defend the innocent against the forces of evil. Can you prevent the devastating war that is about to start? Not with sissy names like Lorak and Cyrus. With the help of brave new allies, you can free the desperate city of Lork from dark invaders, and perhaps find true love in an unexpected place. Long Long already in love! What's her name? But not all characters you encounter in the savage frontier will be beautiful or friendly. That kinda look like Ronstock! <laughs> Fuck you, Long Long! All right, let's enjoy cool character sprites that we will never get to use. That was a cool little addition of how NPCs kind of came in to the battle. Crushed by the, the treant. What is that? Crump fruit? Giant campfolt. You will meet the beautiful residents of the Savage Frontier and its deadliest denizens. Sometimes in your travels you will meet the, uh, strange inhabitants as well. It's a guy wheel carting a pig pig. Honor will not be your only reward for victory. Great treasures can be yours for defeating the forces that threaten the Savage Frontier. Welcome to the Savage Ghetto, folks. The warmth of summer has been replaced by autumn snows. Snows that will affect your movement and outdoor combat. The great expanse of the Forgotten Realms awaits. Only you can prevent the terrible war that is now about to start. All right. 
I've already imported our characters. And here they are. So you lose a lot of magical stuff. In fact, if you do beat Valgamon, uh, you kill him and then you still have to exit the, the level north. Uh, you do not get to transfer his, his plus five longsword or his plus five shield, which is... Uh, well, which kind of sucks, but um, I don't feel bad not going back and trying to fight him again. Uh, as far as that battle, I it's def I looked it up. It's definitely feasible. You do need to be more well equipped. Uh, everyone else that defeated him had extra healing potions. One guy was able to haste his party. Uh, so yeah, I definitely was ill equipped for that battle. Um, however, it's not going to really matter. We're going to come into this part two. Uh, very overpowered, uh, especially at first. So what did they let us keep? Well, let's take a look. They uh, got us at level 7. We, of course, get to keep our attributes. And we get our Armor of the Glacier, store, the Sword of Stone Cutting, plus one shield, Silver Mirror, and the Cloak. Now, one thing they did fix in this is you're not able to stack uh, armor class items that have a uh, equal to or less than bonus. So you'll you'll notice like in the last game the cloaks of the cloaks of displacement would actually give us the plus 2 armor class, but in this they fix that. So if we try to equip this cloak, you can see we're still stuck at negative 4 armor class. So these cloaks um, are essentially useless except for some good starting money probably. Uh, our mages already have them. Trog has his Sword of Icewind Dale, plus three plate mail, and a plus two composite bow, and also has a cloak of displacement. He starts with 500 platinum, letting us keep some of our money. Well, they let us keep a lot of gems and jewelry, which is going to help us out immensely. Fidget's got 698 platinum. He's got his plus three plate mail on, which we haven't identified yet. His plus one shield. He's got his plus two battle axe of the, the dwarven battle axe. The plus two longsword and a plus two ring of protection also will not help. You see he's already at negative six. We could put on the cloak and the ring. It's not going to help at all because it's equal to or less than the the plus of the plate mail and you basically only get the greatest plus attribute based off of any one armor piece um, however you can stack armor and shields but a lot of this other stuff isn't going to work in conjunction to that cloud eyes are plus one mace plus three plate plus one shield Ronstock has his cloak of displacement, his bracers. These are AC4 bracers, which we got at the very end of the last game. And we need to identify some of this other stuff. Curvish is gone, but Lilith also has cloak of displacement and AC4 bracers, Wand of the Ice Storm. And we got these at the end as well. They're probably AC4 and a plus one dagger, I would imagine. So yeah, this is our starting characters, and let's go ahead and get it going. I'm not going to be diving into this. As you all know, I've been um, kicking the living shit out of Avernum, and I will continue to do so, but I thought it would be the right thing to do to kickstart this uh, Treasures of the Savage Frontier game off since we just completed Gateway to the Savage Frontier. I'll try to get to this and, and not let it linger too long. Uh, we'll see. No promises. What the fuck? All right, this is the GOG version. So hopefully we only have to do this once. Uh, the journal. Word 2 after initiative is round. Late summer in the valley of, the, of Deserin is a time of subtle beauties and quiet thoughts. 
On a hilltop above Yartar, your party spends a lazy afternoon of food and friendship, recalling your great triumph at Ascor. No, it must be a dream. The green hillside has become a cold stone floor. Dark ceilings have blotted out the bright blue sky. Worst of all, the sweet songs of the birds have become the strident clank of armor. You recognize the familiar face of your old friend, Amanitis. Oh dear, he says. One, two, three, ah, they all made it. I was afraid I'd left out a word or two. Once while fighting owl bears, I summoned two white rabbits, three vials of sensuous silvery moon perfume, and a stuffed fish on a plaque inscribed to Old Boggy from the boys. Amanitis collects himself and explains to your party where you are and how you came to be here. You record his words as the introduction to your journal. Amanitis embraced each member of the party, repeating how glad he was they'd arrived safely. Then we sat down on the cold stone floor, and he explained what had just occurred. Dear friends, he told us, I am truly sorry for having pulled you away from your well-deserved rest at Yartal. It was my hope that your great victory at Ascor would make the savage frontier safe from its enemies and allow you to resume normal lives. As normal as I suppose as life can be, when everywhere you go people rush up to shake your hands as the heroes of Ascor. Sadly, recent events have made this return to peaceful life impossible. You are in Lork, far to the south and east where you began this day in Yartar. We now sit in the ancient stronghold, that same stronghold where you met with the besieged dwarves as you sought the final statuettes on your last adventure. Just weeks ago, the Zentarum, legions and their allies were decimated by monsters you summoned to the plaza of the ancient temple at Azkor. The surviving orcs fled back to their mountain kingdoms, and the trolls limped back to the moors. The shattered forces of the Zentarum retreated south, following the path that leads around the great desert through Lork, the one city they still controlled. The first bloody fighter staggered into Lork last week and collapsed in the street, babbling about the hordes of monsters who had defeated them. Words quickly spread among the dwarves that you had destroyed the Zentil armies, and that more survivors would be returning soon. The dwarves realized that this was their one chance to revolt, to rise up and throw off the Zentarum invaders. Weapons were distributed, old plans reviewed, and the first attacks were launched that very night. But Lord Gildar, the Zentarum impostor who murdered the last dwarven king of Lok, is no fool. He had held back a large force of fighters and low, loyal monsters, forces he was supposed to have sent to Asgore. They know if that they are to push Lork, there is nowhere else to go, and Zintil Keep is very far away. They have fought the dwarves bravely at every turn, and both sides have taken terrible losses as they struggle to control the city. Milzor, the dwarven leader, sent a messenger to me at Sakomba, seeking help. I arrived this morning and immediately realized that only you, the heroes of Asko, could save the city and its brave dwarven rebels. I cast the spell that brought you to this fortress, and I pray that your skill and wisdom will prevail over the evil forces that seek to enslave these noble dwarves. If you can free the city, please come to visit me at Sucomber as soon as possible. I must return there now, for already I am receiving troubling reports about strange new events in the savage frontier. Your help may be needed elsewhere too, and soon. May Hum guide you safely through the challenges that lie ahead. Boom shakalaka! And welcome back to the Savage Ghetto. Amanitus bids you goodbye and departs Milzor. The dwarven leader next salutes the party. Honored heroes of Askor, thank you for coming to our aid. We will not stop the rebellion until we throw off the greedy Zentarum, who stole our city and killed our king. He rushes from the room. The party is left alone in the ancient fortress. And here we are again. Back in the SSI Go Box series Fantastical Adventure. Yet another. Which we have become very comfortable with. Gra bit of a graphic update for sure. Looks like the color palette's looking a little extra sexy. We'll go ahead and save on A now that we got the game moving. Looks like they want us to go ahead and start memorizing our stuff.
dealing with some just straight up whole persons for now. Oh, haste. Yeah. We could have just casted haste. And we should have in that last battle. <laughs> should have definitely had haste on our party members. But anyways. Get these spells memorized. First things first. I'm afraid to see what they turned our characters into. Okay, Lug Lug looks pretty normal. Trog is in is whipping shit now. I'm just gonna leave it for this video. I'll just edit it off. Yeah, sure. Fidget doesn't look anything. He's supposed to be smaller, by the way. Okay, he is small. But he doesn't have his fidget his fidget head. Have that dwarf head, that big nose, yeah. There we go. Sure. What the fuck did they do to Clot? Clot grew a mustache. <laughs> you guys gave Clot a mustache. How dare you? Also, how dare you not? Give more female type heads on this game. I think I'm going to give very distinct colors to everybody and just. They're going to be stuck with a very distinct color. All right. Yeah. We got to have Ron Stock in his black and red outfit for sure. Looks like they added a couple more sprites into that shit, but whatever. And Lilith is jamming with her purple robes. I'm okay with that for now. We're on normal, which is veteran. And yeah, I think we're good. Let's go ahead and pop a save and get started. So here we are back in Lork. Located on the trading route that leads down to the western edge of the Great Desert before turning east to the inland nations of the realms. It's the only town still controlled by the Zenterum after we defeated their asses in the Battle of Ascor. Alright, let's get this adventure going. We are in Lork, the battle torn city. Dwarves are fighting for the liberation. And the forces of Zintil Keep are fighting to retain their last stronghold in the Savage Frontier. Lord Gildar rules Lork with magic and cruelty from deep within the Keep, a stronghold that includes a small dungeon. We need to defeat the Zintil forces in town, descend into the Keep, locate the evil mage Gildar, and kick him in the nuts. New Zintarim troops are straggling in from their disastrous defeat at Azkor, and dwarves are coming from nearby mountains and hills to support the rebellion as well. Therefore, we may see one or both sides re, uh, receiving reinforcements, and it may alter the balance of power. All right, so let's get started. The city of Lork, looking sexy. A dwarf stops you holding up a map. 
You'll need this to find your way back through the secret doors if you need to rest. You thank him and record the map as your journal entry number one. It's the map of the Dwarven Stronghold. We got the keep, the temple, the inn, and the keys. Oh, yeah. All right, well, let's wander around and get into some shit, shall we? Oh, it's a beautiful fucking day. An old stone fortress stands to the east. Lord Gildar's keep, the ornate coat of arms above the gate, has been so battered by stones that its family imprint is all but gone. Might not be a big fan right now. Carved in the stone are the words, the bull and boar. Several Ettons and Lord's men have backed up a group of dwarves in one corner. Well, we gotta help them, duh! Oh, look at the Ettons, they're looking cute! Lug luck here. They're not hitting shit though. Start fucking with morale. Come on, you dwarves can get up in here. Oh, some Zentil fighters have joined. Okay. Oop. I was trying to aim and manually target, not fucking get next to them. <laughs> These dwarves are pissed.
Finish him! <laughs> the party has won. Pretty good XP. Throwing us some levels. Holy sheep shit. Probably nothing we need to worry about. The dwarves thank you for your help, as you record what they say as Journal Entry 5. Thank you for entering this battle and helping us against the Zintil invaders. We control the area north south of the river, as well as our ancient stronghold. More dwarves are coming in from the hills to help us, but more Zinterim stragglers from Ascor keep arriving too. We need to wear down the Zinterim before we attack the keep and go after Lord Gildar himself. If we clear the rest of the town, he'll have to keep sending soldiers and monsters to try to stop us. And soon the forces remaining at the keep will be weak enough for us to face them and regain our city. That's more or less what we need to do is keep helping out the dwarves here in the city. And in the streets. A sign carved in the shape of a camel swings in the breeze above this door. End of the lucky caravan. Would you like to rest for a platinum? Sure. It's a good place to save as well. The griffin rust the door portrays a griffin resting on a satin pillow. Griffin's Grange, fine foods for tired travelers. This tavern is in shambles. As an outnumbered group of dwarves battles a force of men and griffins. Alright, let's help out our dwarven friends here. Looks like we got a couple griffins, a lordsman, a few griffins. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. We got this. Sally forth! You might want to stop missing, though. Okay, never mind. <laughs> now, smack the shit out of somebody. Mages uh, AI in this don't like to just run up and throw darts. It's very strange. You gotta get them in range first, it seems. The reinforcement mechanic seems interesting. It's pretty cool. Gives it a little bit more of a thematic edge.
Not like laying shit to waste. <laughs> bye bye. Above the tavern doorway, a sign shows a beautiful black horse eating from a silver trough. Gracefully etched into it are the words, my horse is home. Huh? The gentleman's armory. Are you interested in weaponry? So you can already see the addition here. We have personal funds versus pool, pool funds, which is nice to know. It's not going to be anything we're going to want to buy here, but we can appraise. Do we really want to carry around shit like that right now? No. However, we can afford to ID stuff. And you can see how much platinum that's going to go for hopefully i haven't looked deep into this i haven't researched this but hopefully we have a bank here there's no reason to id the rest of those because we're gonna sell those uh, i would like to id his plate though just so we got it all sexified Just turn it into a plus two battle axe. That's not cool. That's ID'd. Not enough money, okay. Well, he will have enough money when he sells those for 250 platinum. Yeah, the plus two ring of protection will help. normal dagger we ended up taking AC4 these might be AC2 no they're AC4 okay Well, once we find a bank, we'll be good. Anyhow, we now have helms and magic helms in this game, which should help us against critical attacks. And they will definitely help uh, add to armor class. The lovely melodic voice of a woman singing comes through the door from the south. Let's go in, says Fidget. I must see who it is so we can sing. Who it is can sing so wonderfully. We should say first. Oh, yeah, I didn't think it was that. No sooner do you open the door than a group of hideous winged creatures fly toward you and attack. Queen of the Harpies. 
The harpy's got a little bit of an adjustment here. That bitch went down like soggy pancakes. You don't sing to me, bitch. They went for Lilith. Halls of training. I want to see if we can perhaps get others up a level. An ancient stone tower rises above the city here. No sooner do you step into the old tower than you hear many voices shouting. Across the room, cage griffins are released, and a row of lords' men charges towards you. Gonna break that morale. Bunch of bullshit. As you enter this room, several lords' men are looking up at the ceiling. They draw their swords and attack. They got some driders. Definitely should take the driders out. Doesn't say displaced on my guy anymore. I need to check and make sure. I didn't even check on the mages. They should still have their cloaks as well, though. Shit, I don't even see y'all back there.
Ah, oh, fuck, that sucks. Go ahead and bandage fidget up. We're going to need to head back and rest after that. Yep, riders are heavily resistant to magic. And they can kill poison, as you have seen. Just like that. I just got some uh, shield on. Well, that gave Lug Lug the experience he needed. We'll save his B for backup and see if Clock can get everyone back on their feet here. All right, Fidget, we need to get you a level, sir. So yeah, Driners are they're they're a fuck around and find out kind of enemy. They can paralyze you with that poison, and boom, you're dead. And you can't just fireball them and kill them because they're resistant to magic. The room is very dark, but you can hear something moving towards you. More awesome driders. Didn't help me very much. Yeah, and they got that fucking reflective spell. Fire shield or whatever. That should get you too. I don't want to get in Lug Lug's way there. Lucky we didn't lose anyone. The place to the north appears to be an inn. The sign reads, Valhalla here. A little haven, an auth owner, not responsible for stolen horses. Okay.
We can rest safely here. The building to the north was once a guard tower for the city, but it's been converted to a tavern. The sign on the door says, Close by order of Lord Gildar. Do not enter. Fuck you. As you enter, several men eye you suspiciously. Can't you idiots read? Yells one. The sign has big letters and it's, It's them attack! It's them! The guards run to the far wall and release several griffins from their chains. Hey yo! Got more where that came from. I hope they're not capping Fidget at 6 and 7 just because he's a dwarf. That'd be racist. Looks like he should be able to go up to level 9. What's interesting is if he was a strength of 16 or less, he could only max at level 7. 17 strength, he'd max at 8. But since he has 18 plus, he should be able to go to a fighter level 9. Thief level, he should be able to go to whatever the cap is of the game. Uh, and, of course, our humans will be able to reach their cap as well. But, yeah, they, they still capped it. He is capped at level 9 for this game. He's splitting XP, so, of course, it can take a little bit longer for him to level. This is the Dwarven Temple, the Temple of Dumathane. Flowers have been set against the wall here. On the far side of this room, several men are enlarging a crude opening that has been cut into ancient stone wall. They notice your arrival and release several caged griffins before rushing towards you. And then you cast Fireball. And so does Ron Stock.
Battle went on too long, and the Zentarum warriors showed up. So did some dwarves. I'm coming, I'm coming. Wrong key. He flees. You step through the opening in the tower wall. We have to clear this area, says Clot. From here, this interim could launch a surprise attack on the stronghold. Several Etons and fighters are standing in this room, checking their armor and preparing for battle. They see the party and grab the closest weapons they can find. You're getting boom schwack a locker. Whoops! You can take it, Trog! You come across a strange party with an Etten, Driders, and Zentil fighters. They're all trying to move quietly toward the door to the north. Rebels! We must be getting close, yells the fighter. Finish them off and we'll exterminate the dwarves once and for all! Oh, these guys are fucked.
All right. I think that's it for them in there. <coughs> A number of men and monsters are milling about the courtyard. They see the party enter, look at each other, and seem to hesitate. One man yells, attack! Kill the invaders! And the force reluctantly advances. We've killed a bunch of them, so... They should be pretty weakened. Well, they fucked up us being able to cast another fireball. Congrats on that. Coming out now, though, bitches. That should whittle them down a little bit. Lug Lug calls everyone together. We best rest here and rememorize our spells. This fight was tough, but we haven't defeated Lord Gildar yet. The party must be fully ready before battling before and we go on. Before must be, uh, oh God, Lug Lug. I don't know what kind of XP Fidget be needing. We're going to go back and level our characters here before we start the next video. Obviously, that will require me to save and load until I get an appropriate number of hit points. We're still not at that level where we're just getting our con bonus or our plus two or plus three, rather. <clears throat> so we're going to want to make sure we get the best possible HP that we can. But yes, let's definitely rest and get our spells back. And thank you for watching episode one of Treasures of the Savage Frontier. See you soon.